Some startups go up, others go down. Welcome to GeekWire's Elevator Pitch, where three entrepreneurs pitch their businesses in the 42 seconds it takes to get to the top of Seattle's iconic Space Needle. Over the course of nine episodes, we'll narrow the field from 27 entrepreneurs to one winner. In this episode of Elevator Pitch, presented by Smartsheet, we'll hear from three startup founders as they pitch their emerging businesses to our panel of leading investors and entrepreneurs. Let's meet our judges, T.A. McCann, a serial software entrepreneur and professional sailor who sold his last company to Google and counts Rival IQ and more than a half dozen other startups to his name. Richard Tate, the motorcycle riding Scotsman and mastermind behind the hit board game Cranium, who now stirs up new ideas inside Starbucks. Heather Redman, power broker and former Getty Images executive who cuts deals as managing director of venture capital firm Flying Fish Partners. The clock is ticking. Jump on board and ride with us on the elevator pitch and find out which entrepreneur has what it takes to make it to the top. Hi, I'm Max Baker, CEO of Lemon here. Welcome to the Space Needle. It's our company mission to provide personal illumination to workers at risk. There are roughly 30 million people who wear a hard hat every day in the North American, EU, UK, and Australian markets. And it's our goal to provide a halo on every hard hat. In the last 12 months, we've had nearly 400% unit sales growth rate, and we're expecting to roughly triple revenue this year. We therefore do not have a funding round open. However, we're always looking for access to capital, ideally non diluted strong strategic partnership, staff, and of course, customers. At Illumigear, we care about getting you home safely. I'm Max, thank you for your time. How much does it cost? 99 bucks for Halo and battery shows up. And if you guys want, play I'll with definitely it. check it out. Yeah. And take me through how the sales cycle works. Like, how do you get visibility? How do you engage with the different municipalities or companies? We sell to 30 state DOTs, about half the largest contractors in the country use our equipment. Uh, currently, about 65% of our business ultimately goes through distribution channels. So be that Amazon, HD Supply, Fastenal, Granger, Shop Reliable, you name it. What's the competitive moat that you have on this? Well, we have the patent on the design and the utility of the concept. So if you take a, a rigid ring structure and you put it on a safety helmet, we own that. There's a very particular uh, Z89.1 rating, which is the rating that dictates the structural integrity of this hard hat. And those clips are designed so they do not invalidate that rating. Hard hats are kind of like cars. They're ubiquitous, but they're very different. So I, own, I have owned multiple soccer ball bags full of different hard hats. They're not all the same. And that system, the way it mounts, it does not require anything from the hard hat. So that is a very unique advantage in the environment that we live in. And from a competition standpoint, instead of essentially an Energizer camping headlamp, our product is designed to live on this helmet, which is an industrial tool. And instead of having a camping solution that's essentially a throwaway item, we're, we're built for the environment. What's limiting your growth? There's a couple factors that technically limit growth. We're still a relatively unknown entity in the market space, but there's a huge amount of opportunity depending on how you break down the different markets. So primarily, I think sales, boots on the ground, that's how product is sold really in this industry space, which we view as safety and uh, safety technology in particular, and then uh, market awareness. So we're focused on staffing from a sales side and then developing a larger brand and marketing approach this year and into next year with the launch of two new products. If I've seen a hard hat with a ring on it, which I have, and I actually feel like it's prevented me from hitting a few people, quite honestly, so, so good on you. Is it yours or could it be somebody else's? It's 99% likely ours. There, you could take 3M back sticky tape and you could mount it on your hard hat yourself. So I, I can't be for sure, but that technically invalidates the rating of the helmet. So safety managers and OSHA inspectors will actually remove those helmets from the job site. So it's pretty high likelihood that if you saw that, that's us. Where do you go from here? Do you go to bikes? Do you, are there other applications for this technology beyond hard hats? Uh, there are, but truth of the matter is we're very similar to a Sonicare toothbrush or a Clarisonic facial brush. There is a huge market, global. It's really big for just Halo. And by really big, like there are 25 million people that wear hard hat every day. What would make Honeywell, Topcon, Trimble, 3M bias is because we're the avenue in to how does the job site actually measure 
uh, the improvement in personal safety, and, and Halo is the cornerstone. And so it's, it's really the beginning of our company. We've never viewed ourselves as a lighting company. We view ourselves as a safety technology company. Uh, that's the acquisition play. We signed some NDAs. I can tell you guys some interesting stuff. That's where we are right now. Thank Excellent. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you. Having good technology like this for safety you know, could be pretty ubiquitous, right? I mean, we all walk around in the dark all the time. But I think you had a great point. You know, they're staying laser focused. It's a big market. Yep. They've, they know what they're doing. They have patent protection in that space. Yeah. Um, I love that. I do wonder about the patent. I mean, that seems like a very broad patent. To basically, lights in a ring around a helmet. You know, that's. Uh, I, I'd like to probe on that a little bit and see if if somebody is trying to rip that off. Yeah. Well, and as a small company, if someone does rip that off, what are you going to do? Right. The fact right. that he hasn't done sales and marketing properly to sort of get that right. awareness out there to even get someone to be concerned about copying it. That was interesting, sort of not penetrating some of those channels yet. He's got to figure out how does he make it a no-brainer for everybody else to be selling this for him.